Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. If you're new here, this is our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso FG and we're turning it into an overland camper. Now that the interior is starting to take shape, I'm going to put some energy into the electrical system. Step one is turning these lithium iron phosphate cells into battery packs. Each of these cells are rated at 320 amp hours and they're about three and a half volts. By arranging these cells into three groups of four, we end up with three battery banks that we can put in parallel to end up with a 12 volt, 960 amp hour battery pack. I know what you're thinking, that looks like four groups of three. Maybe it's the new math, but let me show you how I see it. Battery number one will be made with these four cells here in the middle. Battery number two will be these four cells here. And battery number three will be these four cells here. Now the main reason for doing it like this is just to configure it to fit into the space that I have and doing it this way actually puts all of my positives fairly close together or all of my negatives fairly close together, which works out well for keeping the wiring short that will run to each of the three BMSs. And just to avoid any confusion later, yes, the black is positive and the red is negative. I have absolutely no idea why they did that, but really the color doesn't matter to me. Now your next question might be, why did I leave gaps in between each of the rows of three? Well, this type of lithium iron phosphate cell can actually swell when it gets charged and that reduces the capacity. So I need to constrain these cells to stop them from swelling. That's right, that means inside this box and inside this box, we need to form a box. Well, technically, maybe not so much as a box, but something that can contain the batteries. So I've started with a 3D printed part, or more accurately, several 3D printed parts. To start with, I designed the part in SketchUp, but unfortunately the finished size was slightly larger than what my printer can print, so I modified it to fit together like a puzzle. Next, I sliced the model in Cura to create the G-code and printed the pieces on my Ender 3 V2 3D printer using PETG plastic, which I then glued together using cyanoacrylate glue, also known as... The now I can place three of the cells into each tray and they're held precisely in the right spot to line everything up and give me consistent and accurate spacing between the cell blocks. By placing a second tray on top, the cells are grouped into threes to form a neat package, which is easily repeatable and will give me consistently sized cell groupings. So I can now wrap them with the fiberglass tape rolls or what used to be rolls because the fiberglass doesn't stretch at all, it prevents the cells from expanding across their width. By repeating this for each group of cells, we end up with four nicely packaged sets of three cells each. If you're thinking I've just done something horribly wrong by having these two cells arranged with the two positives together and the two negatives together, don't forget this cell is actually part of that battery pack. And you may also be wondering why I've placed one of these fiberglass sheets on each side. Don't worry, that will make sense shortly. Though it may seem a little flimsy to use fiberglass tape to hold these together, it's actually what the manufacturer provides to secure the cells to constrain them. The thin fiberglass sheets placed between each cell help protect the very thin aluminum casings from rubbing against each other, which technically can short the cells together. Lithium iron phosphate cells have a unique crystal structure that makes them less prone to overheating and thermal runaway when compared to other lithium ion batteries. This stability is due to the strong covalent bonds between the lithium, iron, phosphorus, and oxygen atoms in the material, which are less likely to break down and release energy as heat during extreme conditions. This is going to be the difficult part. Not a lot of finger clearance down there, and these weigh about 36 pounds each. Let's see if I can do this without squashing my fingers there we go well it is starting to look better it's not really going to constrain the batteries completely so it's time to go to the kitchen let's go out to the kitchen and have ourselves a snack well luckily for me it's not that far away while the kitchen may seem like a strange place to go to work on batteries, it's a good place to go to steal cutting boards. That's right, this half inch thick cutting board that I got on Amazon, link in the description if you're looking, is going to be perfect for making sure those batteries can't swell while they're charging or discharging. And no, I'm not stealing Krista's cutting board and cutting it up. With the cells taped together, this center cell cannot expand outward and the outer cells cannot expand inward, but 
both outer cells can still expand outward. And this is where the half inch thick cutting board comes into play. I'm going to cut one piece of the cutting board to go across the front, one piece of cutting board to go across the back, and you remember there's gaps in between each of the cells that just happens to fit quarter inch threaded rod. Okay, it doesn't just happen to fit, I designed it like that. The space in between the upper and lower battery trays is about 180 millimeters or a little over seven inches. So my strip of cutting board will run through here and then the threaded rod will run from front to back and keep the plates pulled together. And this is why I've put fiberglass on the sides of the packs as well as in between the cells. This is just a little bit of added protection for the threaded rod that'll be running between them. So let's cut to cutting up this cutting board. If you're doing a project like this, cutting things, make sure you pick up one of these deburring tools. There's a link in the video description because taking a sharp corner off is as easy as that. That was probably a little bit hard to see. So let me see if I can give you the first person view. Beautiful. So satisfying. Because this battery is quite large and will weigh just shy of 150 pounds when it's completed, I've taken it back out of the hole that it sits in to assemble it. I'll do a dry assembly out here, then disassemble it, put it back in the hole and reassemble it. With all the cells lined up, you can now see where my cutting board piece is going to go. And in between each of the cells, there'll be a pair of threaded rods pulling everything together. Now getting the location of where these threaded rods go through is going to be pretty important because I don't have any extra space. But I do also know that the width between centers of the threaded rod is going to exactly match the width of the printed trays. So to start with, I'll mark out my center line and then I'll go out by the width of a tray and out by the width of a tray. The width of this cutting board was 758 millimeters, which means I need to go to 379 for my center, which is going to be right about there. I'm not going to try and mark everything on the cutting board. I'm going to get it close. And that little indicator, I can put some tape on it where I can actually see what I'm marking. 379 metric simplicity units. With all the holes marked, I can now clamp these two pieces together so that I can drill all the holes at the same time. But I don't think I need to show you that part, do I? Um, yeah. <sighs> okay, but let's make it quick. Holes are drilled, and maybe you're thinking, how are you going to reach in the back to get the nuts? I'm not. The rear piece of plastic has these hammered in the back. These are blind nuts. Ooh. So all I have to do is put the threaded rod between the cells and thread it in. Now I've got to cut some threaded rod. And one last thing that I've done before I start to assemble these is put a layer of heat shrink on the threaded rod just as an extra layer of protection in between the threads on the rod and the edge of the cell. I say it's time we give this a try. Trick <laughs> is going to be lining up the first piece of threaded rod. There we go. Okay. The threaded rod is actually quite easy to line up and thread in, and overall, this is a pretty simple way to build a nice battery bank. Well, there you go. One 14 volt, 960 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery bank assembled with a couple of kitchen cutting boards, some threaded rod, and some 3D printed parts. Once again, if you're interested in any of the parts that I've used to assemble this, take a look in the video description. You'll find some Amazon links. Following those links will take you to these parts. And if you purchase anything on Amazon after following those links, it helps support this channel. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you haven't already, consider hitting subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Let's go out to the kitchen. Let's go out to the kitchen. Let's go out to the kitchen.